Hi, this is Alan Gilbert, Technical Specialist with Autodesk. In our previous video, we took a look at precision input and snapping for Civil 3D and AutoCAD for MicroStation users. So in this video, we're going to take it a step further and we're going to add tracking to the mix. And you'll see what I mean right away. So to start with, I have uh, the same settings that we left with in the last video. I have the object running object snaps turned on. And what I'm going to add are the snap reference lines. Just going to turn that button on. So I'm going to start the polyline command and I'm just going to place one vertex and another. Now notice once I place that vertex and I move my cursor around it's actually without the ortho turned on it's actually restricting me to 90 degree angles relative to my active working plane here, UCS. Okay, so why is it doing that? Or why is it 90 degrees? Well, I want to escape here for a second. We're going to go over to the next thing we're going to talk about in a bit, but the, there's a setting in here that matters. And this is under the polar tracking area. I want to hit the pull down and hit tracking settings. Polar tracking is off right now, but on the same dialog, there's some other options that affect the way the generic snap reference lines behave. So notice here on object snap tracking, which is what we're using, it says or we have the option toggle to track all polar angle settings instead of just orthogonal. So if we had this on, the orthogonal you saw before, that's all you would get. But with this on, it will actually come over and read the angle settings over here under polar tracking, regardless if polar tracking is on or not. So I'm going to set this to 45, meaning track at every 45 degree angle. So let's hit OK. And let's do the same thing. P line here, start, stop. And now notice my snap reference lines are going every 45 degree angle. OK. And I can hop on that line, just wait for the green line, and I could type a distance, 140 there, for example, and I will jump on that direction at that distance. Okay, I'll delete that. So we can go back and turn those back to 90. And I'm still going to leave polar tracking off for a bit. And we'll go back to P-Line. And now let's see how we can use it to do some precision input. So now I'm looking for an endpoint here. I have the snap reference line turned on and the 90 degree snap grid or uh, ortho snaps and so if I go and acquire the position here just you hover and wait for the green cross I'm going to do the same thing here then I can pull my cursor along this reference line and these two will interact and I can grab that intersection point without creating any construction lines or using any snaps so that was all a hover. I have not clicked the, the mouse at all. So left click to finish. So let's try another one. This time we'll go P line. This time I'm going to hover, wait for the green cross there. Same thing here, wait for the green cross. Now I'm going to move down in the direction to where both of these would meet. And notice I'm only getting those 90 degrees because that's what I set it back to the polar tracking. If this was 45, I could get some 45 between these two out in here I would have more solution opportunities as you can see as I just move around as I acquire I can acquire see I'm waiting on the green for all these to where I can track all these pretty much at one time and watch these interact okay so very powerful for precision input the snap reference lines now let's talk about the polar tracking a bit. Before we turn it on, I'm going to go back into tracking settings and I'm going to turn the polar angle measurement to absolute. I'm going to turn polar tracking on. Leave this for 90. 90 for now. So let's turn the snap reference lines off just for a second. Okay, and I'm going to start the P-line command. And now you can see as I move around and looking at polar angles, the 90 degrees that I selected. Okay, nothing's happened here because I didn't I don't have the snap reference lines turned on. But now let me click 
And so my next point is relative to 90 degrees from the plane or the UCS. That's the direction I'm acquiring. Conversely, if I set this, if I go back into the tracking settings and set this relative to last segment, notice the difference. After I place the second vertex, notice I have the tangent direction that I started. Or if I wanted to go over here and hit a center point for an arc maybe, notice now I'm relative to the last segment placed. So big difference there. And so you can put it all together to find some neat solutions. I can go to turn the snapping reference lines on also. I've got the relative polar tracking turned on to continue that same direction. I can go acquire here as a snap reference line and notice I find my direction of that direction of that line it continues up and I use the snap reference to find that offset point there. Hope these tips help. Have a great day.